If you are here, you have taken an active role in bettering your life, no matter what stage of life you are in. The Banyan Treatment Center's podcast will discuss many topics like recovery, addiction, self-help, mental health, and so much more. It will provide you with tools to succeed, ideas for recovering, and how-tos on creating a better life. My name is Alyssa, and today's episode is about the link between mental health and substance use in first responders. Today on our panel, we have Jason Patton. Jason, thank you so much for joining us today. Why don't you tell our listeners who you are and a little bit about yourself and what you do? Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me on, Alyssa. Appreciate it. Uh, my name is Jason Patton. I'm a 15-year firefighter and paramedic. I've been working for Riviera Beach Fire Rescue for all that time. I also created something called Fire Department Chronicles, which is uh, originally started off as just making funny videos, led into <laughs> actually uh, having some mental health behind it. And then uh, at some point in time in my, uh, my own life, I suffered from some mental health issues, discovered uh, getting treatment, finding better ways to uh, treat myself, and then banning treatment centers fall directly directly behind that. Thank you so much, Jason, for being here. Yeah, if I had to describe what Fire Department Chronicles is, I would say, or like who you are in that persona, it's like firefighter, paramedic by day, comedian by night, yeah, you know? Yeah, I hope so, um, <laughs> <laughs> And I mean, your following has grown exponentially over the past couple of years. And just like you said, I know we've talked about it before. It was like, I think I'm going to try making some videos and it just blew up. Like, yeah. why don't you tell us a little bit about how that happened? Yeah, no, I started off as just uh, messing around in the station. I, I say there's a, one of me in every single fire department across the world, <laughs> 100%. Uh, I just got lucky to get fired in the process. So. <laughs> Uh, but uh, yeah, I just uh, started making videos, uh, started off, uh, we called it uh, National Geographic's Fire Department Edition, uh, which was very fun. We were hunting for uh, different positions in the fire service. The a big one was uh, hunting for paramedics via their natural mating call, which is bitching. Uh, and uh, that was huge just because I am a medic, we could say that. So, uh, But yeah, it, it started moving forward and then um, slow growth over time. And then uh, what really got it to kind of explode was I started green screening myself into to different uh, fire and EMS shows. And uh, now I think to date, somewhere around 4.5 million followers, something like that. So it's been absolutely amazing. Wow. Mm -hmm. That is so awesome. And how many years? How, it's like, been about about five years. Okay. About five years, yeah. Yeah, you're yeah. killing it. You're Thanks. killing it, man. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, okay. So in regards to our topic today, according to research, close to a third of the first responders population suffers from mental health disorders. These individuals are the ones putting their lives on the line for the safety of our communities, and this significant issue of mental health needs to be addressed. Today, we're going to go over the battle first responders face daily in their important and sometimes dangerous line of work. So what do you think are the most common issues that first responders struggle with? Yeah, I think uh, in general... It's first responder. It's anyone that that feels like they are uh, the toughest person in the room in mm -hmm. general, and we need to be a lot of times when we walk into a room. The people that are calling nine one one, they're looking at us to be able to save them or help them or whatever needs to happen. But a lot of first responders, what happens is they 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 never let that go. Even mm -hmm. once they leave the room where they've helped somebody to get back and they're suffering from you know something that they had seen. You know, obviously we see stuff that a normal person should never see. You right, sh you should never see dead babies or or see people suffering. Right. you know stuff like that, and it's. Typically, it's not the dead people that bother us. It's the the people that are suffering in the moments because they're you know experiencing a loss. Mm -hmm. uh, we never let that stuff go. We we tend to k kind of uh, bring it inside. We don't want to talk about our feelings. We don't want to talk about things that we're experiencing because if we do, th if we do uh, uh, express those things, we feel vulnerable, and vulnerability is not something that any of us want to feel. So uh, a lot of times, it's just releasing that I have to be the toughest person at all times uh, thought process with ourselves and realizing that we are humans first and then first responders. Yeah. So do you see more in one position than you're doing more than the other? Like when you're out there for a fire, do you see more tragedy compared to being a first responder or it's all one and the same? It's just different types. Yeah. I mean, f first responders tend to, you know, when you're when you're kind of defining what first responders tend to be, it's, you know, anyone that's that's helping people on scene first. Yeah. So, you know, dispatchers are in there, you know, EMS providers, firefighters, so on and so forth. It's, oh, did I say first responder? I meant paramedic. Yeah, no, no, yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, no, but paramedic, firefighter, all that stuff. We, it tends to be one in the same depending on the situations, yeah. you know. Um, 
you know, but God, if you have a, a really, really bad, tragic, huge fire, I mean, we, there's been stories of people, oh you know, gosh. losing dozens and dozens of people, full family members imagine. and stuff. Yeah, I mean, and, and extremely tragic. Again, uh, you know, the loss of a of a of a mom or dad when they're a little bit older is one thing. You know, you say, yeah, that sucks. It's tragic. I'm going to cry. But you know, you kind of in your head, you're like, all right, it is what it is. That's um, it was part of the life cycle right. there. But you know, when you lose your child or an entire family and you couldn't get to them because of a fire or something that that's where we see a lot of the the tragedy and loss in those moments yeah it's so unfortunate Mm. what kind of services are offered to first responders when they're seeing this type of stuff currently just from the job itself you know, peer support programs are typically the baseline of what most people are asking for. Mm-hmm. So, you know, uh, being able to reach out to a fellow brother or sister, talk about the feelings or things that they're experiencing in that moment, uh, and then hopefully they can help them at least talk about it, work through it. Uh, but if they're not able to get through that, then we start going to, um, you know, inpatient treatment facilities or outpatient yeah. treatment facilities. Uh, you know, banning the reason I in I got involved with Banyan for multiple reasons. One, uh, I've dealt with a lot of uh, treatment facilities over my time uh, teaching CPR. I own a CPR mm-hmm. company, and I've seen the way some facilities run themselves, and it's not uh, not the most trustworthy kind of way. But yeah. Banyan, from the day that I came to contact with them until today, I've never experienced anything that was unsavory or untrustworthy, and that's what I appreciate it. Plus, they offer stuff, uh, you know, nationwide facilities. I believe yeah. opening up their 16th facility uh, here very soon which is incredible. Um, but, you know, they're not in it. They are a for-profit facility, but they're not in it for the money. They're in it mm-hmm. to do the right thing. That's why the recidivity rates are so low. That's why they've, they've done everything perfectly. And they literally offer everything from, you know, IOPs, you know, telehealth IOPs, all the way up to the most intense types of care that you can possibly ask for. Yeah, so you're saying that on the job, the services that they offer, this peer support, mm-hmm. what did you call it? Peer support, yeah. Peer support services, mm-hmm. they don't necessarily they can't necessarily help every situation. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes people need more depending on how they've been affected. Mm -hmm. And that's when a program like Banyard would Mm -hmm. come into play because of the mental health programs that we offer Mm -hmm. or a lot of times first responders start using drugs and alcohol Mm -hmm. to try to numb those feelings and emotions that they're experiencing, which can lead to an addiction. And they may not even be purposeful. You get yeah. injured on the job. We mm-hmm. all, I mean, that's back, yeah, that's in, true. back injuries are the number one injury in firefighting and EMS. I wow. mean, so a lot of guys, you know, they may not uh, develop a substance use or opioid addiction or whatever it is on purpose. I mean, the number one injury for firefighting and EMS is back injuries. So they go to a doctor, the doctor gives them the opioids to take care of the pain. They take the, the correct amount of pills that they're supposed to uh, take. And they say over a seven day period, you become fully addicted to those things. So it, they literally, Literally, maybe doing everything right and mm-hmm. still get addicted and end up in a bad situation. Or, yeah, a lot of us cope with alcohol and that can develop into something very bad very quickly. Yeah, and it's it's important that you talk on you touch on that because so many people like don't understand how somebody gets to an addiction. But it's like this disease does not discriminate. Mm-hmm. You know, things happen. It's like the the recipe for disaster. You know. Mm-hmm. It's one thing leads to another, leads to another, and then you find yourself unintentionally addicted. Nobody Mm -hmm. wakes up saying, I'm going to be an addict. (laughs) I'm going to be an opioid addict today. (laughs) You know, that's not how it works. And that's why it's so important to help destigmatize addiction and what people are going through because, like, this is a symptom of the problem. The mm-hmm. problem is not actually the drug and alcohol use. It's a symptom of it. The mm-hmm. actual problem itself is much deeper. Oh, yeah. And it's the trauma that they're experiencing. It's the mental illness that they're struggling mm-hmm. with. Um, you know, it's it's how they grew up and what they've seen that's kind of like turned them into the person that well, they are Well, the culture today. in firefighting in general is very seated in alcohol. You know, and, yeah. it, and it's fine. If you're if you're able to have a couple beers and that's it for the night, great. You know, right. but mm-hmm. if you're not that person or when you drink your personality completely shifts to a different person Mm -hmm. these are things that that we need to think about you know you don't have to drink to have a good time that is that is something that needs to be fed into humanity in general but especially with first responders yeah so there's a lot of drinking at the firehouses when you guys are on not no no definitely not at the fire (laughs) get fired for that (laughs) no but like a celebratory thing so when we're tired we go drink you know uh you you you, uh you you uh, finish your probationary year we go drink you know yeah stuff like that and again there's no problem with it if you're able to do it without an issue right but there, so many people aren't able to do that. Right. So, and that's that's what we need to look mm-hmm. at. So why don't you talk a little bit more about your relationship with Banyan? Mm-hmm. I know we kind of touched on it, but yeah. who are you at Banyan? Mm-hmm. You know, how did it start? 
Yeah. No, uh, I'm actually heading up the first responder programs. Anyone that needs treatments in uh, in the first responder community, even outside the first responder community. Again, that was another reason I got involved. Uh, I want a place where first responders can go feel confident with what they're getting, mm-hmm. depending on what type of treatment they need, but also their family members. Because yeah. I've helped fellow firefighters' wives and, and daughters get into treatment. And if we were just specifically a first responder program, then it's not an all-inclusive thing for all their family members. And that's what I, I need to be able to provide for, because I don't don't just speak to first responders. I speak to people in general. So, yeah. but with with Banyan, I've been able to be able to utilize all the facilities across the United States. Every level of treatment I've been able to get guys and girls into, and it's been incredible. But again, I I wouldn't trust the place that didn't gain my trust because the fact is is first responders don't forget. Mm-hmm. If if I send someone to a place and I promise them something that they're not going to receive and mm-hmm. they don't get it, you know, it's there's a uh, saying out there, telephone, tell a firefighter. The second you, <laughs> the second you do something bad, they're going to tell every single person they know and it's and, and it definitely will come back quickly. Yeah, I imagine you get so many messages mm-hmm. for help, especially when you, you know, you post publicly about mental health mm-hmm. and like your experiences and what you've seen and you know, just like the suicide rates in your mm-hmm. community. So then people reach out to you yeah. and you had a need to fulfill of like, you know, where can I refer these people to that's a reputable place? And that's when you decide on me. Yeah, of course. I mean, your reputation is on the line there, you know? 100%. And you work on that very hard every day. <laughs> Thank you. You know? So how can a first responder benefit from treatment? And have you seen firsthand how it's impacted somebody that needed help or that you've helped? A hundred percent. You know, one of the big things that uh, firefighters and first responders and humans in general, we tend to fall into this thought process that um, once you are seeking treatment, you are broken forever. And that that, that, that's, that doesn't make sense. You yeah. know, hum- if you break your leg, your leg is not broken forever. You right. go to the appropriate doctor, they reset it. Uh, you know, then you do whatever rehab you need and you get back to normal and then you might never have an issue again. It may even heal stronger than it did before. Uh, so that's in that same situation, if you have a mental health issue or you have a substance use issue, we're able to get you to the appropriate treatment. You get the treatment that you need. You may come back an even stronger person. First responders in general tend to come into, or we, we've we seen that they come into being a first responder because they want to help people because of things that happened before they were a first responder. So right. we may actually reset you back to a good place and be able to move forward. I've seen tons and tons of people just sometimes you need a, a little life reset, a 30 day vacation away and you, you're able to kind of find who you were before and then get back. I've experienced my own issues. I was drinking a little bit too much COVID sitting at home all day long. Mm-hmm. You no, know, just drinking, drinking because, and not because I was depressed or had issues, but there was nothing better to do. Yeah. So <laughs> playing video games and drinking, you know? So I did that for a long enough period of time where I noticed I was like, ah, I might now just be drinking just because I want to, just because I'm, I'm bored and I'd rather not kind of create that, that uh, habit. So mm. I had to reset for 30 days. I didn't drink for 30 days and then got back to a normal whatever drinking would be. So I think that's so important to touch on, too, because so many people like go their whole lives just drinking alcohol normally. And mm. that's fine. But they don't ever try to take a break from it. Yeah. You know, and I think that's important to like reset you. You'd be surprised how sluggish the booze might be making you oh, yeah. until you take a break. You're like, wow, I feel amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I yeah. guess I was having a couple too many beers. <laughs> yeah. um, and that's, and it's good. Dude, alcohol is a depressant period. Yes. It's it, the way it is. And I noticed what I was noticing was that my thinking wasn't as fast as it was before. I mm-hmm. wasn't able to, I wasn't doing anything crazy. I wasn't, I didn't have DTs or waking up, but it's okay to catch things before they end up in those situations. Right. You know, I think uh, people want to go to the extremes and then have to go back to the the other extreme to be able to correct it. No, this doesn't look right. All right, let's take a step back and see if we can correct it. And then everything was fine. So we actually have a new program here at Banyan, our, our military and veterans uh, in recovery program. Mm-hmm. And we see a lot of the first responders, even though they might not be a veteran, which mm-hmm. some of them are, you know, but yeah. they love these groups. Uh, they're talking about similar traumas, similar experiences, and they really bond together. And I think it's just so amazing that we have this additional service to offer to first responders Mm -hmm. to realize like, you know, we take this very seriously treating this, these populations, these special populations, because we know and understand that they have gone through stuff 
other than, you know, the regular civilian population. Yeah. And that's why we have these different programs. Um, yeah. No, I think and I think having programs or tracks specific to first responders and veterans, you know, the fact that that uh, Banning is able to take TRICARE is huge. Yes. You know? mm-hmm. uh, but we want people that we want, you know, a uh, therapists and individuals that are working for a treatment facility to be culturally, comp- uh, culture- culturally competent to what we've gone through, what we've seen, so on and so yes. forth. But not be so fixated on those things to say that these are the reasons why you are who you are and Mm -hmm. they have nothing to do with that and be able to set back look banyan is if you want treatment if you want the if you want to get better uh or get to a better place then there's no better place in banyan period if you want to be sprayed with fire hoses and be around (laughs) only firefighters then you know there's maybe other places but uh but this i've never sent a person here that has not walked out of here 100 Mm -hmm. satisfied if they put in the work that they needed to do to get to a better place do you have any stories you can share with us not like obviously the specifics of somebody that you helped and the outcome or you know how you experienced that situation oh yeah no i i've had i've had a couple guys and girls you know spouses of, of first responders and first mm-hmm. responders they recognize that they have a problem and they come in i, I had someone come in um, and actually it was an out of a out of state facility from florida and uh she went in there with the mindset that she wanted to change and what was incredible was she goes in there meets other people that aren't first responders mm-hmm. and bonds with them very very well uh, and finds a connection that it was a, a, a principal uh, for a school and they were able to connect realize that they were that they were actually uh, friends had a bunch of mutual friends and oh, stuff wow. and you know they were able to find similarities in their past that got them to that point and it was incredible because dude I'm telling you so for me for my own personal journey it was uh, a, a bunch of therapy sessions that that got me back to where I re- needed to reset it was one sentence that this lady said to me after multiple sessions and I was like oh my god that's it mm-hmm. like that's what that's what's going on right now and I and it was a completely different path I still had to do some more work but it was a completely different path from there yeah mm. we like to call it the aha moment yes when you finally feel something click you know you've been like you're getting the solution just beaten into your brain but mm. like it's not necessarily clicking yet and mm. then one thing one day is said to you and it it sticks with you yes. forever And this person half the time doesn't even realize how much of an impact they've made on your life. Mm -hmm. So I can only imagine how much of an impact you've made on people's lives. And you don't even realize the specifics of it, you know? Thank you. But it's pretty amazing to see. And speaking of, this podcast is sponsored by Uh (laughs) AHA. So what would you say is the best and worst thing about being a first responder? Yeah, the, the best thing is, is uh, you know, when you go to school, you go to school to save lives. You go to, mm-hmm. you go to school to change the, the path of people's lives, the trajectory of people's lives in an instant. Mm-hmm. And you get to experience that on a daily basis when you go to work. Some days are worse uh, than others, but some days you literally, you make a decision that completely changes someone's life. And if you weren't there in that moment, then they may not have lived past, you know, that day yeah. or, or that week, so on and so forth. The bad part can be, you know, you miss ho- holidays with your family mm-hmm. and, you know, there's uh, moments where you want to be at your kid's graduation or, or uh, you know, uh, opening Christmas presents with your kids on, on Christmas and you have to miss those. But uh, it's a sacrifice that that we appreciate uh, or makes us appreciate the moments that we do have with our families more. Yeah. Yeah. You guys go into it with the best of intentions. Thank you. So how can the public help support first responders? I I think in general, just, uh, you you know, if you see a first responder, you know, we, we, we joke, we, uh, we don't like to thank you for your service. Okay. <laughs> like we joke about that. Like when people say, it, we're like, thanks, you know, I appreciate it. So, uh, we appreciate people saying it, but I think just in general, you know, any kind of, um, any kind of support for, you know, if, if you see a first responder struggling, maybe talk to them, see what's mm-hmm. going on. You know I mean? We're, not, we're probably not going to open up, uh, cause that's not what we do, but ho- hopefully, hopefully someone's willing to talk. But I think just in general, uh, just being supportive city council meetings, stuff being there, if there's, mm-hmm. you know, if they are talking about building a new station or something supporting that you know um we 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 uh we we tend to ask a lot of the public a lot of times but i can promise that we are always there to return that favor so are there like reputable charities because i know my phone rings with scams all the time to mm. donate money but are there like reputable ones? <laughs> yes yeah <laughs> i don't want to do that um so uh actually there is a reputable charity out there it's called next rung uh i talk about them a lot um they uh actually support first responders with mental health or substance use issues and they will pay for them to go to treatment oh, that's 
amazing. It's very, very cool. So, and I, I've worked with them personally. Uh, we, uh, my, uh, my charity, Fire Department Coffee Charitable Foundation, we, we gave them $5,000 to help support their efforts because, I mean, these guys, and they're not, they're not making money off of this. Mm-hmm. And they work a lot. They do a lot of fundraisers, a lot of charity stuff. And they legitimately support guys cash in hand, paying for them to go to treatment. Uh, and, it, and it's absolutely amazing. Yeah, that is so amazing. It's very cool. So what would you say for a first responder maybe listening to this or, you know, there's a family member listening and they want to get more information because they think that their loved one needs to get help? Like, what would you suggest to them would be the first steps in getting help? First step is is just the willingness to open up and be vulnerable. That's mm-hmm. it. And, and understanding that being vulnerable doesn't make you weak. It actually makes you stronger. Uh, uh, Brene Brown speaks on that. She says that uh, t- uh, the person that's the most vulnerable, uh, most vulnerable in the room tends to be the most courageous. And I love that. I think it's absolutely absolutely 100% true. So if, if you're willing to open up, especially if it is a peer support class or a peer support, a uh, bunch of guys sitting around, you're involved in a, a CISD or something like that, willing to open up in a room, you may be the most courageous person that allows other people to be vulnerable mm-hmm. in that same moment and help people. So step one is literally just being willing to talk and understanding that you talking is the first step to you truly making a next step forward. And it may be the complete change in your own trajectory in life Mm -hmm. that's awesome um so do you have any projects coming up that you want to discuss, let people know about? I just finished filming three commercials uh, for a thing called Detect Together. It's a fun way to approach cancer prevention and firefighters and first responders. Wow. It was very cool, yeah. And then uh, I did something for uh, post-overdose uh, post overdose outreach programs to help people with opioid overdoses so they don't have to keep uh, re-overdosing, so on and so forth. Yes, it's called poop. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right now, a TV show that I filmed is being shopped. Um, to networks. So, so we'll see. awesome. Yeah, I'm very excited. And then I'm flying out uh, in September to film uh, a movie. So that'll be real fun. Okay. Yeah. Doing big things, Jason. Yeah, it should be fun. Thank you. So Thank where you. can people find you? Uh, Fire Department Chronicles, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook. Uh, all over. T- yeah, all over the place. And then if you ever need to reach me, if you ever need help finding resources, whatever it is, you can call my cell phone personally. It's 561-771-5100. 561-771-5100. I will be the one picking up the phone. So give me a call and hopefully I can help you. You hear that, ladies and gentlemen? Mm. He just dropped the digits on the line. So. <laughs> Well, that's great. Thank you so much for joining us today. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. And we're so glad to have had you. Thank you. Appreciate you having me on. Well, we hope you enjoyed today's episode. Remember that growth and recovery are possible and it can all start today. Be sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Banyan Treatment Centers and make sure you're subscribing for notifications of new episodes. And please don't forget to leave us a review. If you or someone you know are struggling, call us today at 888-515-7706. Thanks for joining us today on the Banyan Podcast.